Hi there, welcome to Mobile Geeks. This is Stuart Haston. And this is Nicole Scott. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about Android Wear and the news that happened uh, yesterday with Sony. So Sony announced that they're going to be taking a pause, maybe not jumping on the Android Wear, Android Wear bandwagon as quickly as everyone else. And they're going to be focusing on LifeLog, which is their platform for wearables. It's a really, really, actually it's coming out next month and it's quite mature. So I decided that I wanted to hear about Sony's smart wearables, and I've, I was a smartwatch one user, but you've been a smartwatch two user, so you have it on right now. That's right. This is the smartwatch two, which I've been using now for a couple of weeks. What do you think? I think overall the the device itself is pretty good. I mean, it's a 1.6 inch screen. Obviously, you're not getting much in the way of pixel uh, area or, mm. or real estate. It's it's pretty small, but. Uh, at the end of the day, it's a companion device. It's a little bit different from what you're seeing from Samsung or indeed with LifeLog, where you know it's going to manage your life, it's going to help you with your fitness regime, it's mm -hmm. going to do everything except cook your dinner for you. Whereas this guy is more, he's more of a conduit from the information that you're getting from your smartphone. So it's a lot of notifications and a lot of being able to play your music, say, from the smartwatch. Uh, on your phone, you can even take a photo. You can do you can do quite a few things, but it's always through the the. It's more like an extension of your smartphone, I guess, more than what I think the life log, uh, life blog, or life log, life sorry, log. life, life log. log, yeah, life log um, will will become when yeah, because I, I I remember when I I, I use this the smartwatch too for a little while, and I remember mm. being kind of shocked that the apps hadn't evolved and they were yeah. still kind of limited and the the watch was really aggressive with notifications when you first yeah. put it it could have just been like zzz, could have just sat there vibrating all the time it was a little it was a little extreme that's that's one of the first things i, I soon learned once, once you're on the learning curve you have to customize your notifications quite a bit so that even which is good because it allows you to do so with some facebook notifications you can say look i don't care about notifications from these people mm -hmm. so you can even customize it so it's by by user or through a connection on facebook um, Gmail can be quite aggressive. I get a lot of emails throughout the day, so I eventually I just said, look, I don't want any more Gmail messages coming through here because it's the, the vibration is just, it's getting a bit annoying, frankly. And there are other, and then you've got other services and, and apps as well, so I get, yeah, you have to customize it really well. You know, um, so, so Sony was basically first to market with a smartwatch. I mean, like, basically out of all the guys that are on the Android Wear list, Sony was the first, and it was you know it was the f fitness focused, a little, little bit of notification, and, and it wasn't anything that every, anyone thought. Oh my God, this is the device that's going to define wearables and be the, the most successful one. But Sony has done a lot of a lot of learning through its iteration, so I'm actually not that surprised that they've confidently settled on LiveLog. I mean, um, playing that like it's 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 out next month, so we actually don't know how good it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, when life when life log comes along, we'll we'll, we'll obviously know a, a lot more. But I think you're right. Sony have invested a lot in wearables in general, and I think um, when it comes to the Android Wear mm -hmm. situation, where mm -hmm. we where we've got one guy from Sony saying, oh, "Forget Android Wear," you know, we're happy with what we're doing. I, I can understand that because they've put a lot of effort and energy into establishing themselves in the world of space already. But and I can understand how they'd be almost quite annoyed now that Google come along with a magic wand saying, oh, we're going to sort out all of this wearable stuff. We're going to create standards. We're going to create uh, a consensus on certain issues, which, which is good. And in the end, I have a feeling that Sony will have to find a way to remain compatible with the Google Vision. And at the same time, I think they will try to stay reasonably agnostic for now so they can align themselves when it, it suits them. But uh, well, if you look at Android Wear, it's kind of a separate OS from. Well, it's it's, it's kind of a separate OS from Android. Like we're there's, assuming. It's we're we're, we're assuming. Yeah, we're assuming. Is it an right? OS? There's there's just so many questions, right? And yeah. like if you look at the SDK now, it's only focused on notification. It's right? very bad. It's so cool. like, are there like if 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 they build an app for it, is it just a skin? Is is there actually any base control of the wearable? I mean, like there's just so many things that we don't know about Android Wear that I think. To me, anyways, maybe Sony's just playing it smart, and they have a really good app with a, 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 a their, their smart band, mm -hmm. which you know they've customized the sensors, they customized the experience, yeah. and they've they've thought about it. And if 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 what Google is saying right now is true, that the developer should think about 
building a smartwatch app that goes to a device, mm -hmm. right? And not building a smartwatch app, yeah. right? So they're actually building like a smartphone app, sorry, mm -hmm. right? So it's a smartphone app that's going to a watch, not a new, new, like a new smartwatch app, mm -hmm. right? It's still a new SDK, right. but from a development perspective, I don't understand why Sony couldn't just port LifeLog onto Android Wear. Yeah, absolutely. Right, so. I mean, I think there's, there's very little in, in this announcement that Sony apparently are not going to go with Android Wear. I think that's a little bit premature and maybe the media has, has kind of blown that slightly out of proportion. I think, I think that's why I really wanted to, to sit down and talk to you about this because the headlines were everywhere about how Sony screwed up, that they're going to be left behind in the wearable yeah. space, that them choosing to, life, to well, go with LifeLog when we actually don't know that much about Android Wear. Well, this is, I mean, it's, it's also a testament to just how powerful and influential Google has become. I mean, if you go back several years before Android came out when Google said, we're going to do a mobile OS, I think there was a huge degree of cynicism back then. It's like, you'll never compete with Apple. Yeah. Even, even, even Microsoft has tried. You don't have a chance. You know, what background do you have? And Google have totally performed on Android, and they've, you know, they've kicked ass, let's be honest, right? Mm -hmm. So it's gone to the point now where Google's of such a stature that when they come up with something, which is essentially an empty statement, it's a statement of intent, if, 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 if anything else, and they're saying, oh, we're going to move into the wearable space. We're going to fix this. We're going to organize it. And then they have a bunch of partners, some big major partners at the, at the bottom of that statement. Everybody. Basically everybody, <laughs> everybody. except Sony, except notable, Sony. the notable exception of Sony. So I don't know, it, it just kind of amazes me that everybody's drunk down the Google Kool-Aid and, you know, and pe people are like, oh, Sony, you're, you're on the outside now. Yeah. It's like, well, I, I, don't know, I think that's a little unfair. I, so, so do I, but, you know, if I can drink some Kool-Aid myself just uh -huh. a little bit right now, I, you know, when, when, when Google announced that, that knowledge graph for Android about how Android or Google Now was going to intelligently figure out exactly the right answer and not just a list of search results, mm. that was a big move. And when you think about, well, like, it's like, it's like the, the Moto 360 is circular, mm -hmm. right? And so, and the little icon to talk to Google Now is circular. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the, th I mean, that's the first thing. I mean, the, there's a lot, there's a lot that the go on there. The first marketing image looks like a watch, <laughs> it right? Like a watch, it's yeah. like, oh, why, why didn't Sony think of that? Oh, my God. Why, like why are they making it square? Well, no, but it's a round display. Yeah. Where, where are they going to get the panels for a round exactly. display? Actually, like, when, when you point that out, I, I'm going to go do some digging. Where are they going to get round displays? And how do Who's round displays do work? Which way is up? How, oh, I'm going to swipe. How much how more? How does swipe work on a circular panel? How much more is that going to cost for the waste of panel? Yep. Right. So there are, there are lots of issues because I mean, like, on the hardware has, side, right, yeah. with what Google's trying to put forward. And you can see that Sony's kind of maybe a little bit impatient with this attitude because, well, we've been doing these devices for a while now, and we haven't managed to make one circular. <laughs> you know, it's like, and like, here you have, oh, oh, Google's fixed it all with a picture of a circular wearable. It's like. Yeah. And to, to be honest, all of those developers who are like, oh, look at all my renderings of all my amazing app. Uh -huh. They're just like widgets. Like so Pretty far, much. I haven't seen anything that I'm like, oh, oh shit, that, that's, that's unbelievable. That's the one. That's the one. It, 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 it yeah. finally makes sense. No, it, it doesn't finally make sense. We, we mentioned it earlier. You know, there are certain limitations with what the smart, smartwatch 2 can do. And one of them is exactly that. It's like, I want to be able to make a phone call. Mm. If, my if, my, if my smartphone's like in my bag or in my back pocket and I get a call, and I'm carrying something, I just want to be able to press button and say, hey, how you doing? Yeah. You know, I mean, why not? This is this is almost my minimum expectation of what a wearable device should really be, right? Yeah, and there there's still no indication if the the Android Wear is going to be able to do as a standalone. Say you want to do music and your fitness app and leave your smartphone in your bag when you're at the gym, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So like there there's still no indication if 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 it's going to be standalone. But you know do you know what was interesting is that if you look at I didn't look at. I can't remember which site did it, but they found in like the huge, you know, Android Wear, like the fine print, mm -hmm. they found that uh, it said that the device is not HIPAA uh, uh, certified, which is like the health, in whatever, whatever mm -hmm. HIPAA stands for. So it, uh, Android Wear can't be used as a as a health health monitoring device. 
Well, right? that's interesting. Yeah, and like, and that actually makes me feel a little bit better, mm -hmm. slash, uh, actually, or maybe worse. I'm not sure how I feel about it because if things, if if things have to go through like HIPAA or FDA approval, they it takes longer to go to market, right? right. So then the tech will be old. And if you look at any health monitoring, it's it's always older, it's always older stuff because the FDA takes so long, right? Right. But then at the same time. The FDA takes so long because they're making sure that your privacy is insured, right. that the device actually can't be hacked because this is your personal data, right? So I mean, the, yeah. the, the, the privacy issues as well for something like, well, wh like when we watched Sony's live log video, I was like, wait, it's also monitoring mm. my text messages right. and, it, and it can actually track my conversations, yeah. right? But then again, Android will be able to do it, but in, at least with LifeLog, I'm giving my information to Sony, right? right? So I mean, like, any, any way that you cut it, you're giving your information to somebody. <laughs> I mean, I wonder with these, with the, with the medical side of things, I mean, if it's really in the medical industry and somebody has a medical condition and stuff, I don't think wearables are really the answer for that. Because like you said, those technologies are very, very stringently assessed mm -hmm. and tested, and they're usually ba by by which time they're usually based on legacy technology anyway. I mean, very, very mature technologies. But I think the wearable thing yeah, with, with LifeLog, the idea that you know, if I've been uh, sleeping erratically lately or drinking too much lately, then I'll notice in my Gmail account that I'm seeing a lot of ads for clinics and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> AA clinics. Right, exactly. <laughs> For rest resorts. Kind of, Google knows I have a drinking problem. Are Damn no, wearables. No, 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 yeah, no, but actually, probably wouldn't do clinics. They'd probably be like coupons for bars. <laughs> maybe, maybe, right? It depends. Are we, are we looking at this from a health perspective? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, they, no, there's way more money in making right. you ill than making you healthy, I think. <laughs> but who would you rather have the data, Sony or Google? Well, mm. well, nobody. I mean, but but even but even still, pri pri privacy on like the, the the larger scale. There's there's just we could talk about that all day. And actually, yeah. Sasha is way more exactly. passionate that, about that. That borders than I am. that borders on a hell of a lot of issues, right? Let's, yeah. let's, that's that's a whole Pandora's box and stuff. Yeah. So, so I guess at the end of the day, I I think that Sony made the right call, yeah. saying that they're that they're going with LifeLog. That that they're that, that they're choosing to stay away from Android Wear right mm. now. That they can still develop for well, it, but they do. But I look at it from this perspective also. I mean, Sony and Google on the Android platform with their phones and their tablets already have a very close relationship in terms of software development and hardware. So I don't think Sony is necessarily left out of the loop or you know out in the cold as some of the media will have have you know right. Mm. So I think their attitude is more. Let's wait and see. We're not an official partner yet, but you know. We'll, we'll see how, how this goes, and if we can align our, what we're doing, align it with Google so that the two things are kind of compatible, maybe in the long term that will be the right answer. Well, and in the CNET interview, he, they, they, they added that, oh yeah, you know, Android mm -hmm. Wear is on the books, but it was, it was also very clear that, that LifeLog was going to be a big part of right. their future plans. Mm -hmm. And it's, that, like, that, that, that is a huge information grab, right? To be mm -hmm. able to find out when pictures are taken yeah. you know, and predict like, or tell you like if it's gonna be raining tomorrow. Like what, so like right. there's, there's a lot of like Google-esque features in there. Absolutely. And the information that Sony can get about their users is just enormous. And I don't know if I'd wanna give that up. If you look at mm -hmm. Google and say Google, the Google Automotive Alliance, the Google, yeah. Yeah, the Google Automotive Alliance. Uh -huh. um, a lot of the car manufacturers haven't or it took them really long time to sign right. because they were arguing with Google about getting the information. Right. Right. Who gets it? And Google was actually saying to some of these guys, "We want it all." Right. right? And these guys were saying, "Hey, hey, hey! Yeah. You can't have it all. Right. Right. We need to. We need to share. We need to figure out how we're going to do this and share. Right. And so, what Like, who gets what? And like, mm -hmm. the information divide is something that we have no idea what the deals are or yeah. what kind of like where the information's going. And so Sony has a clear <laughs> package where they get it all. Right. Right? So, so it's almost like they have a they have a bargaining chip at least. It's yeah. like, well why do we need to give you all of our data right right now? We're yeah. already ready with our own platform. Yeah. So, you know, take a hike. You know? Yeah. So I mean eh, you know, balls to Sony, I kinda like it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think Sony right now is the only manufacturer or the only major vendor who's actually um, treating Android Wear with a degree of cynicism, and there's nothing wrong with it. There's it's nothing wrong with that, nervous. especially since there's so many unanswered questions. Absolutely. Yeah. So. That's our take on it. We think that Sony made the absolute right call by not drinking the Android Wear Kool Aid, and I hope that you guys are going to leave us a comment to tell us why you think we're wrong or why you think we're right. So get involved. 
So this is Stuart Haston for Mobile Geeks. This is Nicole Scott. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. Bye.